Put Aquarius in the sun, moon, or ascendant position if you want your character to come off as quirky. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk all about Aquarius characters. Now, if you missed my previous astrology video, I do recommend watching that first. I'll make sure that that's linked up in the card, and that will give you all of the information that you need to know to be ready for this video. And don't forget, let me know all about your Aquarius characters down below. Aquarius is represented as the water bearer, but don't be fooled, it's not a water sign. It's an air sign, and its quality is fixed. Air signs are typically known for their knowledge and their independence, and fixed signs are typically seen as calm because they come in the middle of a season. And indeed, that's where Aquarius falls, in the middle of winter. The sun is typically in Aquarius from January 20th to February 8th. Being the fixed air sign, Aquarius is typically seen as intelligent and quiet. Think of Aquarius as hibernating, preparing deep thoughts for the wintertime. This can sometimes cause Aquarius to feel constrained, like the world can't handle their big ideas. But you could balance this in Aquarius with other signs in your character. Aquarius's ruling planet is Uranus, and remember, Uranus is all about rebellion and innovation, so Aquarius is often very steadfast in their ideals. The key word for Aquarius is unconventional. Put Aquarius in the sun, moon, or ascendant position if you want your character to come off as quirky, unique, or too cool for school. Remember, the sign that the sun is in at the time of someone's birth is their central instincts, what drives them, and their sense of self. But we also learned that any planet can be in any sign, so let's make sure we talk about those as well. And while we're doing that, I'm going to put up some example characters that I think could be interpreted as having that planet in Aquarius, so that way you can make some of those connections. Aquarius rising are often labeled as special or different. Since your rising is what you project out into the world, think of the things that we just described and apply it to that. So Aquarius rising people are often seen by others as quiet and intelligent. This may be expressed directly or indirectly. Think about things like someone's style of dress, or maybe they're shy and quiet when they first meet someone. The moon in Aquarius shows someone that is deeply thoughtful in their inner world. This placement shows up in people who are very observant of others. And like Aquarius in other areas, that differentness shows up as well, but it might not be recognized by their peers. Since it's in the moon, it's going to be a feeling that someone feels inside, like they are different from others. Since the moon is someone's inner world, Aquarius moon can come off as detached or aloof from others. They can sometimes seem over cool or above petty squabbles. All right, so that's our main three. Next, let's go to the personal planets. You're going to see all of the same things here. We're just going to apply those themes to the different areas that those planets represent. Mercury in Aquarius colors someone's communication style as unconventional. Since Aquarius is all about deep thought, these people might be the first to jump in and play devil's advocate or try to debate and win a conversation. They are often more interested in scoring intellectual points than anything else. And this is often coupled with some sort of intellectual agenda. This is a force that can be used for good or ill depending on what else is influencing the person. Venus in Aquarius colors someone's love and desires as unconventional. People with this placement often seek out unconventional or even rebellious relationships. They may see their relationships as experiments or phases, or even a direct expression of their independence. Pleasing a Venus and Aquarius person means letting them know just how unique and special they are. Mars and Aquarius colors someone's ambitions as unconventional. If you don't quite know what this person's goals are, they are perfectly happy with that. They revel in being unpredictable, clever, and willful. In this placement, the rebellion and reformer aspect of Aquarius really shines. Jupiter in Aquarius tends to value personal freedom above all else. They long to share their unique perspective to achieve tolerance and humanitarianism. They see themselves as tolerant, fair, and impartial. 
Saturn in Aquarius can be a little difficult to understand. They do have structure in their lives, but when you look on the outside into their lives, it looks like chaos. They typically don't follow conventional things such as having a five-year plan or hitting major life milestones at a typical time. So those are our personal planets, and we're gonna move now to the outer planets. And remember, those planets are more generational. It's talking about what's happening to a group of people born in that time, not individuals. Uranus in Aquarius is a time of social change. Revolution, upheaval, and radical movements are aided by Uranus in Aquarius. Since Uranus is Aquarius's ruling planet, this is where it is most naturally and best expressed. The last time Uranus was in Aquarius was from January 13th, 1996 to March 10th, 2003. And this is excluding times that it was in retrograde because that only lasts a few months. Neptune in Aquarius is a time of humanitarianism. Neptune grants compassion and emotion to Aquarius. It leans on less traditional methods of spirituality such as humanism and new age thinking. The last time Uranus was in Aquarius was from November 27th, 1998 to April 4th, 2011. And again, this is excluding times that there was just a few months here and there for retrograde. Pluto in Aquarius is a return to commitment to doing the right thing. During this time, there is a push to right unjust power structures and also to destroy and rebuild the things that we do where we only do them just because we always have. The last time Pluto was in Aquarius was from 1778 to 1789, and we're due for it again from 2024 to 2044. So that's how all of the planets react when they are in Aquarius. I really barely touched on this, and it's just intended to be used for inspiration. If you liked anything that you heard, I do recommend further reading. And as for that further reading, I have linked my favorite astrology sites down in the description below, so you get a place to start. So now that we've talked all about it, can you think of any Aquarius characters? Let me know about them down below.